Suit, no tie. Now, am I reading this correctly, y'all? Biden's family urges him to stay in the race. Jill, come on, you're coming with us. Hands, but no, ma'am, no, no. Put your Starbucks coffee down. Come, you're coming with us, Jill. You're, come on, you're coming. Hands behind your back. You're coming with us, man. Ten four, ten four. You're coming. You're coming with ten four. You're coming with us, ma'am. You're coming with us. This is elderly. Come on, come on. And we're going to investigate the family. We're investigating everybody in the family. We're everybody's. Come on, come on. It's not funny. It's not funny, y'all. I'm for real. I'm for real. <laughs> I'm for real. This is elderly abuse, man. But y'all know the left, them Dems, them liberals, everybody. Oh, they're shaking in their boots because they know this might just be a landslide in November. They can't stop watching those memes, those debate clips. They can't stop watching, you know. All the times they said, oh, this was a cheap fake, a deep fake, a he fake, a limb fake, gym fake, a woo fake, I, everything's fake, and AI, and then they play, they play it on CNN and MSNBC. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 what we've seen and heard, yeah. There's nothing fake about it. We're not stupid. And... This is elderly abuse, man. This is sad what's going on, what's taking place, man. And nobody steps in. The love, they let their allow this to happen, man. Who's running the country? Wow. This is elderly abuse, man. I'm for real, you guys. Let's go and jump into this, man. Let me stop all this yapping and talking. I know y'all be like, Rick, come on now. You talking too much. You need to stop acting a fool. You need to act your age. Yeah, I need to act my age. I know. I love y'all, man. And I want y'all to know, y'all do not hurt my feelings, man. To be a, to support what I support, to be a patriot, to be an American in Houston, Texas, you gotta have tough skin. You got to know when you get when it's when it's time to get on that when you get on that horse, you about to ride that horse, and that's how I was raised. Shout out to my, my family. Shout out to my parents. Rest in peace to my pops, man. He said, if you get on that horse, you about to ride that horse. Ha! Ah, we chopping, baby. <clears throat> Can't nobody hurt my feelings, especially in the comments. And this is why we spread so much love on this channel. And I wish the best in all you guys' life, man. Happy 4th. One love. The human race, man. We don't make excuses. We don't play victim. We work hard. And we try to better our situation. And we call out the truth. We keep it real. People are struggling right now, man. Millions are dropping like flies. People have died, man. Criminals are walking around smiling. And what to call it is wide open. Come on in. People are making life decisions in, in a grocery store. People are scrolling down apps trying to figure out which gas station has the cheapest price. Then you go get an oil change. They say, oh, do we, this needs to be done. This needs to be done. No, 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 no. I just came here to pay for the oil change. I don't got enough money to, to, to pay for all that. I just want to get my oil change. Thank you, sir. I don't care if my alternator is going bad. I got kids to feed tonight. Come on, man. Let's get right, man. Time to get back on track, man. This isn't America. And we're going to keep calling it for what it is. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry. Unsubscribe to the channel. I love y'all. So apparently, folks, Joe Biden is not going anywhere, even as we learn shocking new details about his mental decline. The president huddling with his family over the weekend to do a photo shoot with Annie Leibovitz and to hash out what to do about the avalanche of calls to step aside. They reportedly urged him to stay in the race and want staffers fired 
for overloading Biden's brain before the debate. Jill and Hunter Biden are said to be the strongest voices in support of staying the course. The first son wants America to see that his father is, quote, scrappy and in command of the facts rather than the stumbling aging president Americans saw on Thursday night. And so far, top Democrats are willing to go to bat for him. Yes, it was a bad performance. I know what I, uh, when I see what I call preparation overload. I'm with Joe Biden, and it's our assignment uh, to make sure that he gets over the finish line come November. We both had love of the denial, delusion, the gaslighting. I mean, the gaslighting where they just throw the alcohol out live on air on the floor and then throw the match on top of it. Drunk. And most of it is simply because they just don't like President Trump. They've tried to, they've, they've wiped this man's name through the, just wiped this man, poor man, through the mud, man. Spent and took everything out of context. Want them to be just such a bad, evil man. But I tell y'all, man, the truth must shine in the light. And as you can see right now, after win, after win, after win, seeing that SCOTUS has common sense, mm. Still can't tell you the crime. The same people that be in the comments and be all over the place saying, oh, if he's a convicted felon, 34, felony, 34, 34. I've, and, and, they, and they don't even know the crime. They just hate Trump. We had a, a difficult de debate, and, and, and yet we still managed to go on to win. One debate is not a career. It is always a bad bet to bet against Joe Biden. I think he's the only Democrat who can beat Donald Trump. But forget about making it to November. Can Biden even do the job now? White House aides are telling Axios that Joe Biden is dependably engaged from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day. And after that, he checks out, prone to absent-minded gaffes and fatigue. But his campaign is doubling down in new ads. I know how to tell the truth. Oh, and we had an issue last night. I have to be careful how I talk about this. But we had a couple of people, it was like two, two of y'all that said something about, you know, Dems, ads. Um, we, I have no control. If you guys see anything on, on here, I have no control. So please uh, just don't be careful. Don't, don't. And we had people saying, even threatening me saying, um, if I see this again, when I click on one of your videos, I'm unsubscribing. It's just saying negative stuff like that. I have no control of it, you guys. Just letting y'all know, please. You know, when it comes to advertisement and stuff on the channel. And I know like millions of Americans know, when you get knocked down, you get back up. And the first lady is defending her husband in a glam new Vogue spread. She says the critics, quote, will not let those 90 minutes define the four years he's been president. We will continue to fight. First Fans off, Greg, when your back. entire party is in meltdown mode, maybe you cancel the Annie Leibovitz family photo no, shoot. No, 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 that's too important. That's too important for these people. Dependably engaged. Does that mean he's wearing Depends? I have no idea what that means. And I, I just worry about the terrorists that are watching right now. It would be very rude for you guys to somehow attack us when he's not dependably engaged. So if you can call Canada beforehand and then we'll get back. I'll just leave something on our voicemail because I think it would be rude. You should refrain from attacking us when Joe is not dependably engaged. Remember, the media reacted in horror over Joe's condition, not because they saw it. It's because we saw it. It's still, I still think it's the worst scandal in political history, a party and a compliant media uh, protecting a sham government run by a collection of progressive interests. And because uh, they prefer that to democracy, it's just easier this way. And now they're shifting. They're shifting it back to like, well, Trump lies, Trump lies, Trump lies. There's no lie like this. It's not comparison. It's there's no comparison. And also it pisses me off when I hear these journalists talking about how they were hoodwinked. This was like the most important job of your life, breaking a huge story and you let it go right past you. Mm. I mean, this is worse than Watergate. You know, CNN said that every single day. Well, here it is. And they chose Stormy Daniels over this. 
How can anybody trust the news anymore? I mean, you didn't trust mm. it anyway, but now you know their alliances and their biases prevent them from basically lying, gaslighting 300 million people. And look at all the damage that has been done under Joe Biden. Open borders, crime waves, homelessness, open drug markets. This is all products of woke Marxism. So it all flourished under the hood of Biden's presidency. He was the hood ornament, shiny and useless, but meant to run cover for a radical agenda. That is why they're fighting so hard, because they would rather have a headless president and still be in control. Well, the other thing about it, in addition to all that, is that the news that came out of the family meeting was that they were blaming the staff. And that and they made it very clear that I mean, somebody called The New York Times from Camp David and said, we blame the people who did the, the prep. Um, my favorite takeaway, Judge, though, is that there was somebody in the family, one of the grandkids, wants to take on more act, a more active role in the campaign, including working with social media influencers like that's going to do it. You know, first of all, the idea that they would blame the staff. I mean, think about it. Who else are they going to blame? They're not going to blame Joe or Jill. I mean, of course, they're going to blame the staff. And I think it's interesting that Jen Psaki's response to that is if you're directing anger at the prep for the debate, the aides, you're not addressing the right thing. Mm -hmm. She's got her. She's got her priorities right. But, you know, the fact that all of those people that we heard from, you know, the senators and, and, and they they're basically saying, um, you know, this guy, is, he's a great president. How can you promote a guy and be honest to your oath to the American people and the Constitution when you know that he is not engaged for more than six hours a day? When you actually saw that debate that we all saw, hmm. it's more than disingenuous. It is it is just un-American. This man and Dana, I go back to what you said. This man has to be prepared at three in the morning hmm. to answer the question, what do we do now, sir? OK, and he is not that man. He's not that man at nine o'clock at night. We saw that. But you can't help but think that the reason the family is so into this is it's a dysfunctional family. Two of these kids are drug addicts. Hunter Biden ends up sleeping with his dead brother's wife and hooks her on drugs. Nine of the Bidens have tens and hundreds of thousand dollars in their accounts because of the work that Joe and Hunter did around the world. So, you know, politics is good business for these people. It's about them and not about us. Jill is so enamored with being the first lady and every day you see her in these designer dresses and today on the Vogue cover of $5,000 Ralph Lauren dress. I mean, she's so into that. She spoke to Joe Biden, and she's the one who I blame this on. Like, after that debate, it was cringeworthy and embarrassing. Joe, you did such a great job. You answered every question. It was like a kindergarten teacher with a bunch of five-year-olds. And the Shame. It's, it's shame, and I still can't get that out of my head. Still can't get that out of my head. And he's sitting up there, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I sure did. Yeah. And, 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 and we're laughing. Elderly abuse, man. The fact that they're all gaslighting us, I think, is, is horrible. And I think that Joe Biden, and I say this in, in the best way that I can, he's a man who attained the top position in this country, even in president of the United States. He deserves at this point... He loves the beach. He should be at the beach with his family, with his grandkids. But they don't yeah. want that. And don't let them tell you that it's about the country because it's about them. And my last question, who's going to call for the 25th Amendment mm -hmm. and who's running the country? Well, they, did, they were supposed who's to have a cabinet meeting, but that got canceled. I can ah. imagine why. So, Kevin, I have 100,000 questions for you, but I will <laughs> only ask you a couple. One, um, the Wall Street Journal two weeks ago had a piece where they had 45 sources. Many of them were... Um, speaking anonymously, and maybe you don't like, maybe we all don't like that you prefer them on the record, but you can understand why they didn't. And, and the reporters said, we stand by our story. Their editor said, we stand by our story. The White House and the campaign absolutely trashed the Wall Street Journal and these reporters. Yeah. Only then, a week later, to confirm to Axios that everything in it was true, but to add that the president's only dependably engaged from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So I just curious about the communication strategy. And also, my other question for you is, it's like 
the Biden campaign and the people who are in power, Hakeem Jeffries, the people we saw there, are completely disconnected from the rest of the Democrats. Even the left-leaning editorial boards, like the New York Times, for example, saying Joe Biden needs to get out. Yeah. What say you? Uh, I say a few things. Number one, Dana, I think you know the, the president campaigned almost as being a transitional figure in the Democratic he Party, right? It. He talked about mm -hmm. the next bench of Democrats coming up: Gretchen Whitmer, Josh, Whit uh, Josh Shapiro, others. Um, and I think he views Donald Trump as an existential threat to this country, and he believes that. He is uniquely situated as the incumbent, as the guy that defeated him three and a half years ago, as uniquely qualified to do it again. Uh, and when you saw the initial impulse was maybe to step aside after four years and pass the torch. I, I don't know if Donald Trump wasn't the Republican nominee and leading in the polls if Joe Biden would be running for a second term in, in, all, uh, in all seriousness. I don't believe that. Anyway, but, okay. uh, and number two, the, the campaign infrastructure is built around Joe Biden. He's raised a record sum um, of, of funds, a thousand field office, uh, you know, field uh, officials, 200 or so field offices open in these battleground states. It, it's like a cruise ship uh, Joey, that Joey was just on. It's so hard to change that <laughs> midstream. And, and Dana, you raised the point on Friday, if not Joe Biden, then who? And that alternative might not be in a better position than Joe Biden come November. OK, so a couple of things that happened today. Politico uh, buried the lead this morning. They had a story about Governor Gretchen Whitmer calling the campaign to say, hey, guys, I'm not the one out there promoting my name. I'm not trying to do that. Oh, and by the way, the debate performance guarantees that you can that he cannot win Michigan. Like, well, that was Biden's only path to 270 is if he keeps Michigan. And then in addition, we just got a poll a couple of hours ago that New Hampshire, which Biden won, is now Trump is up 44, 42, and that's consistent over the past two months. Ow! So how are they thinking that everything's fine and that everyone's just gonna move on .org and let this carry on? <laughs> I don't think they think it's fine. But I, I, like you said, if not Biden, then who? And I thought about that myself. And there may be a name that I'm completely overlooking here. But, I mean, Gavin Newsom, I guess, is the guy who's campaigned for it. He's got a sex scandal of his own that was very public. And he's also the governor of California. So he loses on immigration and economy. So I don't see Gavin Newsom really doing anything to hurt Trump if Trump has an established lead. Kamala? Nope. You know, uh, you know, Michelle doesn't want it. She's living a rock star lifestyle. Why would they want to go? I don't want your politics. Stop calling. So, yeah, we don't need that Obama fourth, Obama's fourth term. That fella's still working hard. And give the legacy up. Michelle's phone is blowing up right now. Michelle, please. Just think about it. Go back to the White House and be kind of almost poor again. You know, why would they want that? Whitmer, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, I know a lot of people in Michigan. I don't know a lot of liberals in Michigan. They're, they're not happy on her. Maybe Jeffries. Maybe Hakeem Jeffries is a sleeper they could throw in there. But it all comes down to this. Joe Biden is not going to, he's not going to impress voters enough to win over swing voters. He's not going to impress Democrats enough to rally the troops. Their campaign strategy from day one was for President Trump to self-destruct and be the version of himself he was in January of 2020 that they felt like they could run against. And President Trump showed up to the debate and in an almost a boring way took all that away. And that's why they're scared. They're, they're not scared because President Biden stood up there and said, my son died in Iraq. He's told that lie 10 times, you know, to hell with the rest of us that fought in those wars. If I go fall down. Salute, salute, man. Y'all know how we, yeah, man. Salute all our fallen soldiers and heroes, man. You know, we take that very serious on the channel, man. And it's sad that we got to go outside and see homeless veterans, veterans struggling and get killed by a Prius right now because they have prosthetic legs. I didn't die in Afghanistan. I didn't die because of war. I died because something bad happened to me, which is why his son died, and I hate that for him. But when he's willing to tell lies like that in a, in a campaign debate that is for his career, that means he's either not with it or completely thinks the rest of us are stupid. Maybe it's a little bit of both, but he's not going to get elected that way. Can I ask you one last question about sure. these terrorist threats that are announced that yeah. the, against U.S. bases in Europe, and you have... This comes a day after the White House on background tells or maybe the campaign aides tells a major news organization 
that he's only dependably engaged between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Yeah, I didn't have a chance to fact check it, but I saw right before I came on, someone tweeted that the Abbey Gate bombing happened at 9.30 a.m. It did. It was on America's yeah. newsroom. Okay, yeah. so 9.30 a.m., the worst attack in the last two presidencies on our troops. You know, it, it, you know, it, maybe it should have happened a half an hour later and he would have been able to do something. You know, that's, that's what bothers me about this. You can't wake him up in the middle of the night and get enough meds in him to get a decision out of him. So whoever... The, the second and third shift president is, I hope you're watching and paying attention in case we are attacked. Dana, can I just add Please. to that? Uh, we're, we're talking about uh, Joe's fitness. We're talking about the election. That's five months away. Right. Not four, His, right. He's unfit to be president now. 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 <laughs> and they want us to move on dot org. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> boy, boy, boy. Can't make it up, man. Can't make it up. Just can't believe the family uh, still wants him to stay in it. Hands behind your back. The entire world is laughing at America right now, y'all. But I can't wait to crack open the cold one in November. 100, what we got? 125, 125 days? Something like that. 125. I'm getting a barbecue pit ready. The coolers are already getting prepped. We're going to get a bunch of ice from the gas station. You know, we might as well send a couple of them dems in there, them criminals in there, and uh, steal us a bag of ice since ice is like eight, fifteen dollars a bag. A bag of ice, eight, eight, nine, ten dollars. What? Yeah. Just go in there and take me a couple of them bags of ice and bring it outside. I appreciate you. Yeah. They won't. Oh, they won't do nothing to you. They'll let you back out, and they'll they'll they'll, they'll let you go. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Just just give me a couple bags of ice. And matter of fact, bring me a Snickers bars out there while you're in there too. Yeah. Mm hmm. Appreciate you. <laughs> I love y'all, man. Happy Fourth. God bless you all and your families. I'll catch y'all in the next one, man. This thing is something else, boy. Oh, boy, boy.